the lost sheep. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost, until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Who are these ninety-nine just and unblemished sheep? After the deluge, Noah built an altar to sacrifice clean animals as worship offering to God. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. God made a covenant with Noah after the deluge, so that his descendants were committed into godly living. During the days of Noah and his three sons, they had seen the wickedness of men, the breeding of human hybrid, who were the mighty men of renown, Nephilims or giants. They survived when God unleashed his fury to wipe out the entire wicked human race in the deluge. They had witnessed the dispersion of people to the four corners of the earth as the repercussion of the Tower of Babel Foley. Noahic Covenant Love God No idolatry As long as men worship God in sincerity and truth, God has given men the freedom to worship Him however or in whatever manner. Love men. All men are brothers. No hatred, nor killing. Family unit. Monogamy. No divorce, no adultery. Food. All animals and vegetation. Blood. Life in blood. Forbidden for consumption. 99. Unblemished sheep. Noah the preacher and his sons handed down the tradition of Noahic covenant to their lineage. They forewarned the consequences of God's wrath for rebels. Images and idols of mighty men of renown, myths of the Grecian, Roman, Chinese and Indian, were found as early as 600 BC. From historical findings, there was no concrete evidence of idolatry before 1 AD. So, for more than 2,000 years, Almost all mankind were faithful to God, his ninety-nine unblemished sheep. The Lost Sheep And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Terah was the first idolater who was cast out of Mesopotamia. He founded the idolatrous Syrian race. God called Abraham out of Haran and gave the Israelites the land of the accursed Canaanites. The lost sheep was the Israelites, who were found to be stiff-necked, wicked, rebellious, and idolatrous. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. God gave the law to the stiff-necked Israelites, lost sheep, to lead them to godliness. From Exodus to the death of Jesus, which brought an end to Judaism, there might be only 10% of devout Jews saved, yet the whole heaven rejoiced. For the billions of godly Gentiles who had kept the Noahic covenant 2,000 years ago, God was really pleased. Now the purpose of the commandment is love, from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons, our Lord Jesus was born under the law. He fulfilled the law so that at his death he was without sin. He was able to redeem those born in bondage by the law, Jews, 
by His blood shed on the cross and to adopt them to be the sons of God. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus shed His blood on the cross at His death to give all mankind the new covenant. Saved by God's grace, every Jew must forsake the law and every Gentile the Noahic covenant. In that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. Having received the grace of God by faith, a Christian must walk by faith by keeping the teachings of Jesus and his apostles. He must forsake the Sabbaths, commandments, fees, and traditions of the law given by Moses. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Every Christian only needs us to love one another as Jesus had loved him. He worships God in spirit and in truth. With the Spirit of God dwelling in him, and his physical body is now the temple of God, he can worship God anywhere, anytime, and anyhow. Our fathers had chosen Sunday, the Lord's Day, for Christians as a body to worship him in unity. During the Holy Communion, when he partakes of the bread, his body, in spirit he remembers and celebrates the Word made flesh or birth of Jesus, commonly known as Christmas. During Christmas time, in truth, he celebrates the birth of Jesus with friends and brethren and in the evangelism of non-Christians. When he partakes of the cup, his blood, in spirit, he adores, appreciates, and celebrates his death and resurrection. In truth, he celebrates or fasts during the period of Good Friday and Easter. Deed I, Paul, say to you, that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised, that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. Any Christian who keeps any part of the law must keep the whole law, an impossibility without the physical temple of God in Jerusalem. The blood of Jesus no longer cleanses his sins because of his unbelief in the complete work of Jesus on the cross. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. This is the most serious warning from God. Christians who keep any part of the law of Moses are faithless, rebellious, blind, and stiff-necked. Unless you repent, you will lose your salvation for you have accepted the law, which was only given only to the sinful, stiff-necked, wicked, and rebellious. In Christ Jesus, every Christian is a child of God and is no longer under the bondage of the law like the Jews. Therefore, no Mosaic law for Christians. Note, the New Testament was written in Greek to benefit both the Jews and the Gentiles, whereas the Old Testament was written mainly for the Jews in Hebrew, which had died its natural death after the destruction of the Temple of God and Jerusalem. Modern Hebrew was only revived recently for the state of Israel after almost 2,000 years.